Hello, Digital Animation. I realize that uh, while lecturing and, and helping the class and recording all class lectures with TIE Fighter, I know there's spots and gaps and I'm a little sporadic um, and it's kind of chopped up in a lot of days. So what I'm going to do here is a speed review of making the TIE Fighter. So hopefully during flex time or lunch time or when you need to get it made up, this is a nice, more condensed version. You won't have to skip around. So um, I've already set up the image planes because um, the image plane video is, is rather self-contained and I thought that was a good setup. So I'm going to start off with making the cube and rounding the cube. And then we're going to go through all of these steps. And I'll hopefully keep remembering to click back here and tell you what step we're on. Um, but we've already set up the image planes. Again, if you haven't done that, go to the other video. It's already here on this channel. Um, and set up those image planes. So I'm going to make the cube and start rounding it. Again. I'm going to go very fast. The idea is, is you can pause and you can stop and review them. It's not going to be like a class lecture. I'm going to kind of speed through everything, trying to get this done as quickly as possible. Okay, and with that, let's go. So, image planes are set up. I'm going to go to my perspective view and I'm going to make a cube. Create polygon primitives, cube options. I want to, I want to, Make sure that I have the height, depth, and width are all going to be 1111, but the width divisions and the height divisions and the depth divisions are all 333. Okay? So I'm going to hit create. And you'll notice I get a nice little cube in the center there. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to my four view here. And I already have my image planes nice and lined up. And I need to make this cube. This cube is going to wind up being my cockpit. I'm going to hit scale. And I'm going to pull it out to be yay big. A little bit smaller than the circle. So what we're actually going to do, right, is we're going to sphere the cube, right? Or square the circle. So the next step I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab all six center faces. I'm going to go to face mode. One, two, oops, two, three, four, and then all right, I'm going to quit. Remember to hit quit sometimes if that the tool is getting in your way. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to hit scale, and I'm going to grab the, the center box, the one right in the middle. All right, it'll be a light blue, or if I've already clicked on it, it'll be yellow. I'm going to kind of push it out, and you'll notice it already kind of, until it covers those spherical areas. Um, I don't want to push it out too far. Right? I want to kind of just get it so it's semi-round. And we're already halfway there. It already looks, yeah, that looks more like around. It looks like one of those origami round boxes. Okay, next I'm going to go to vertex mode, and I'm going to grab the eight corners. So there's four on top. One, two, three, four. I'm going to grab the four on the bottom. One, two, three, four. And bear with me really quick. I'm going to make my, uh, my vertexes a little bit bigger so you can see them better on the video. Let's do that. And let's do that. Yeah, good. All right. So this time, I'm still going to use scale, R. I'm still going to grab the center one. But this time, instead of pulling out like I did with the faces, I'm going to pull in the corners. And that's looking pretty spherical now. And if it's a little lopsided or off, that's, that's totally fine. We are going to, this is our first project. We're just learning some basics. But this is way better already than um, dealing with a sphere with way more faces. So if I go to polygon right here, now you might say, oh, but a sphere is perfectly round and it's all good and blah, 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 right? But look how many faces there are. Look how many tries there are on the top, right? This is a nice, good, clean thing, and we don't have any of those triangles, which is going to be a pain in the butt when we get to um, dealing with edge loops and all, all sorts of other geometry issues. So already good. The last thing that's going to, and if you hit three mode, you can barely tell the difference. That looks rather spherical. Okay. Last thing we want to do, um, if you just do those two things, the faces and uh, the, the corner vertexes and the center faces, um, you're good. This last little part um, will be hugely beneficial, but if you just do the first two steps, you'll be okay if you don't do this last one. So if you think that's enough, uh, you can actually skip forward. But I'm going to show you how to do this part anyway. I'm going to double click on my arrow over here, and that gives me my settings. And I'm going to make sure camera-based selection is checked off. So make sure that it is blank. There's no check mark there. What that allows me to do is, is when I drag a box, I select through the sphere and get the, the vertices behind it. And I'm going to do it four times. I'm going to get each one here. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. 
Uh -huh. So I'm skipping these two on the side. These were the edges, these were in the middle. Because when I was, I'm actually going to grab these two up top and these two down below. Because when we did the center facing and expanded out, it actually grew that center square. All right? So what I want to do here, oops, I don't want those two. Sorry, my bad. If I hold shift, it'll deselect those. Which is what you're going to learn. Anyway, there you go. So what I want to do now is hit scale, and I'm just going to grab the green box there, and I'm going to pull them down until they're flat, right? And that's going to help even out everything. I have to do this with two more sets. So now I'm going to click off of it so I get a new fresh selection. And I'm going to start with these. Doop, these on top. I'm going to shift. I'm going to grab all four of these in the middle again, and we get the two on the bottom. And for these, I'm going to scale inward. So now this kind of comes back to that regular three by three grid. I'm gonna double check my other sides. My side view still needs to do it as well, right? So this is my front view. My front view still has that tic-tac-toe grid now. And it's already looking smoother again. Um, I need to do that on the side as well. One, two, go to vertex. I'm gonna grab these top two. Oops, excuse me, vertex. And I'm grab, ah, uh, sorry, vertex, it's because I'm going fast. I'm just gonna select these top two, and then shift select these center four. Um, do note that I'm on the side view, and now I'm going to scale R, I'm going to scale them in this way. You'll notice that that side becomes more like the tic-tac-toe grid E2. And since I did the front and the side, and I was, I was selecting all the way through because I unchecked camera-based selection, you'll notice I have a, a tic-tac-toe grid on each side. That just kind of evens it out and makes it even smoother. Oops, makes it even smoother right here. That's pretty darn spherical. And that was a cube. Check that out. All right. Going back to our side view, the next thing we want to do, so that is our, we've rounded the cube. It might be a good idea to do a save as, go for it, or just hit save if you want. Um, do save as and say ready to extrude or whatever you want to call it. But I'm not even going to do that because it's supposed to be a quick demo. All right. So, I have rounded out the cube. Oops. I have rounded out the cube. My next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude and shape the stem. And now when I'm doing this, I want to keep this in mind. I want to use as little geometry as possible for as long as possible. Okay. So I'm not going to try and make too many extrusions. I'm not going to make, try and make too many edge loops. I'm trying to try and keep it as simple as I can for as long as I can. Um, it's just way easier to edit and manipulate later. All right. So I'm going to start with the extrusions. So I'm going to go to face, and I'm going to grab all nine faces here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm going to make nine faces, and I'm going to hit extrude. And I'm going to take a moment to go over this one set of instructions. I'm going to extrude, and I'm going to pull it out. If I want to start over, make sure you undo past the extrude, right? If I hit undo once, I've only undone the move, this move right here. It's still extruded. I have to undo again to get to undo that extrusion. So what I like to do is always undo my selection back here. Why am I saying this? Because a lot of you are watching this video and starting over because you did something like this. You had almost all the shapes selected. Maybe you didn't have two faces selected and you hit extrude and you hit the global tool and you began to pull it out you're like, oh, I did that wrong. So you hit Command Z. And then you said, now I'm going to select the faces. One more, two more. And now I'm going to extrude. Command E, global. And you might not have noticed a problem because they're all stuck together. And then you would have done a few other things. You would have, you know, what we're going to do next, right? And then um, what you could have done next is you could have extruded again. And notice we don't think there's a problem, right? Looks great. Looks like exactly what we're doing, right? Except when I hit three mode, I have all these issues here because I never undid that one mistake extrusion. So I was actually doing a double extrusion. So what you have to remember is, is when you're undoing extrusions or just double check, always go back to where you see a selection starting to go away. So I'm hitting undo several times, almost there. And so the extrusion is still there. I still have that weird extrusion, so I'm going to undo it until that goes away. 
A couple ways you can prevent this. Just get in the habit of hitting undo several times. Um, always skip between one and three mode, right? Rigid and soft. That'll help indicate that there's problems. Um, and there's a few other things. But uh, for the most part, uh, just be careful. And when you're undoing, just make sure you're repeatedly undoing. All right, let's get to the wing. In one mode, I'm going to extrude one more time. One, two, these nine side faces. I could have selected them all here on the side, but I, just, I like working with the perspective mode as well. And oops, I accidentally have these selected, so I'm going to click off it one more time. I could drag a box, but I'm already in... You can drag a box. If you go back to here and check on camera-based selection, I could also do this. All right, this is supposed to be a fast one. So I'm going to hit Extrude, Command-E, or I can go to Mesh Tools, Extrude, and it reminds me, hey, Command-E. Hey, command E. I'm going to hit this global extrusion tool. We talked a little bit about this. Um, for right now, just get in the habit of turning it on. There's reasons why you want to turn it off, but for right now, just keep it on. I'm going to pull it out a little bit. And before I start scaling it the other ways, I'm going to grab the red box and I'm going to scale it till it's about flat. Notice it all kind of comes flat. Now, this is not what I did in class. What I did in class is show you, I showed you how to get it perfectly flat with the snap tool, right? but I'm moving fast, so if it's relatively flat, I am rather happy, right? If I wanted to zoom in and make sure it was like very, very, very flat. So what I'm, what I'm doing to flatten it is this red box. So just to demonstrate that again, it was curved. I grabbed the red box, the red scale tool on the, on the extrude tool here, and if I push that in, it becomes relatively flat. Like that. Solid. That's a lot easier, right? Let me pull it out again. Oops, wrong way. Sorry, bear with me. Okay, so and flat, flat, flat. Close enough to being flat. Double checking this way, that's pretty good. Now I'm actually gonna push it back with the red arrow and I want the extrusion to start right about there. That's when the extrusion is gonna begin. So I'm going to Shrink it down, and I'm using my reference image. So here's the other trick. Use your reference image to, to, to guide your choice on how thick or how tall or how wide something's going to be. And I'm going to have to eyeball this one, but I definitely want it to come in as well. And I'm calling this part the stem, right? The part that connects this wing panel to the cockpit, I call it the stem. I'm not sure what you should call it, but I'm calling it the stem. All right, once you get it sized and flat, so I got it flat with the red scale box, I sized it with the green and the blue one, now I'm gonna be able to work a lot faster. So now it's gonna be maybe one, two, because I'm thinking minimally here. I don't wanna do like 20 extrusions here. So I'm gonna one extrusion, two extrusions to follow it, shrink it down, three, four, bring it out to about here, five, bring it out there. So I'm gonna make five extrusions and resize them really quickly. I'm just gonna do this once and you can always rewind it, All right? So here's my first one. Right about there. Command E, pull it out. Something here. Go to my four view, shrink it down. I'm just matching up those sizes, getting a little skinnier. Something like maybe a little bit bigger. There. Yeah, yeah, that looks good. Extrude out. Command E, universal. Pull it out wide again. About right there. Scale it down, scale it over, it's right about there. Right, Command E, open it up. And I'm gonna go really, this is like where it kind of drops off for a second. A little skinnier this way. And then now it's gonna fan out to getting wider again. Command E, universal, pull it out, somewhere right around there. Could I go all the way to the wing? I could. Um, so I'm kind of going against what I was saying, I'm using middle geometry, but I just know that th this will be helpful later. So I can Command E, globe, and I'm gonna pull it out one more time, make a little wire. That's how you make the stem, all right? So now my stem is complete, okay? The next thing we're gonna move on to is the wing. The wing is gonna be one, two, three extrusions just to get the basic shape, and then we're gonna be manipulating it. So my next extrusion is gonna be way big, right? So I'm going to zoom out a little bit here, and I'll actually just start with the height. 
I'll go Command E one more time. I'm going to global. I'm going to pull it out just a little bit. And now I'm going to go crazy with the green box. Go one, maybe two. Oh, that's pretty big. I'm going to check the height here on my front view. I went a little too crazy. Right about there. Now I got to do the blue box. I got to pull it out wide. Something there. And if someone's like, it's not a hexagon. Don't worry, we're going to make it a hexagon after we extrude. So my first extrusion was out and big. My second extrusion, we're only going to make two. Command E again, hit the global tool, pull it out wide to about right there. All right. It's a nice, good, rough shape. Okay, so now the next step is going to be to shape the wing panel. So um, the, well, we've extruded it, and now we're going to shape it. So we've extruded and shaped the stem. Now we're extruding and shaping the wing panel, and then we're going to add some details. Okay. So I'm going to go right click, I'm going to go to edge, I'm going to grab the corners. Okay, so one corner, two corners, three corners, four corners. These are going to be the corners of that hexagon. So I'm going to go to my side view. And again, I'm going to scale them out uh, right about there. Green, get them out a little higher. You'll notice it's looking, don't worry, I'm going to fix the next issue with, now I'm going to grab the, the four edges, these little tiny edges that aren't the corners on only the top and the bottom. One here, here, one here, and one here. Now some of you might have wanted to do those simultaneously because you wanted them perfectly flat. You could do it that way too, but I'm just going to eyeball it to be flat about here. And now I'm going to make them go wide all the way out to the corner. And if you're remembering from my demo, I actually am doing this the opposite order. So the last time, this was my second move. But for this demo, I made it my first move, just to kind of show you how there's a different way. All right, so now I got my corner set. I'm going to check my x-ray, which is right here. All right, so my x-ray, it looks, oh, they're, look, they, they're very lined up. That looks really good, right? So now I just gotta work on these. So there's two things I'm gonna do. I gotta shrink this center row of faces, and then I'm going to uh, probably need to widen out the wing a little bit more so it fixes the hexagon pattern. So one, two, three, four, five faces, scale, R. I'm gonna get it nice and skinny so that it matches up about the width of this gray beam here. And you might be asking, why didn't you do that for these? Don't worry about that. That's going to that's gonna take care of itself later. Trust me. All right. Next step, I need to make it a little bit wider. If, you, if I'm going to take this off of x-ray, you notice it's uh, it needs to get out a little further. The easiest way to do that is to grab the two side faces, these two side faces along the center. And I'm just going to scale. Again, I'm in scale mode, R. Just widen them out, and now it's kind of, now it's that hexagon shape. I always like to make my model a little bit bigger than the drawing, because usually when you smooth it out, it kind of shrinks a little bit. The last step, before we do some more extrusions, is this center face right here. You'll notice these, these lines, these edges, aren't really lining up with these beams for the wing panel. The quickest way to fix that is to go to the face, go to the center, and I'm just going to shrink them until those lines match up. So it's going to be really, really tiny face in the middle. But now those lines are approximately lined up. And again, we're working in an ish here. If it's not perfect, that's okay. All right. There's our TIE Fighter. And that's looking pretty good. That's a nice, rough shape for a TIE Fighter. And a lot of very simple video games, this might actually cut it. But we're going to learn to add some cooler details too. All right. So we have now... Um, extruded and shaped the wing panel, and now we're adding the details. So we're going to add the details to the wing panel. All right. So what you're going to notice is some of you might think, oh, I can add some edge loops here because we want to add, we want to add this little hexagon hubcap is what I'm calling it, and then we want to add these beams. And because uh, I'm a geek and I, I, I've had Star Wars toys since I was five, I know that these panels are actually kind of indented a little bit. You can't really tell on the drawing, but I know that's how it works. So some of you might think, oh, I can just do, do some cuts here. So you might go to edge loop, but edge loop 
makes an edge loop around the entire system here. And if you remember my rule or my policy, try to use as little geometry as possible for as long as possible. So that edge loop there, that adds a lot of geometry I'm not going to be using later. Right? So that's just going to get in the way. So some of you are learning, oh, I can do a mesh, I can do a, uh, a multi-cut. Multi-cut's not going to be the answer here either. Okay, so what I can do, here's a nice new trick. This trick I haven't shown you before is we are going to go to our extrude tool again. So I'm going to go back to face mode. I'm going to select all of these nine faces, even that little middle one. So I want to select all nine faces. One, two, three, three in the middle, three on the bottom. Nothing on the edge. And I'm going to hit extrude. Now you're used to, for extruding, um, pulling something out or in, right? We're not going to do that. What we're going to do is we're going to scale them on the Y box and the blue box, the Z box, right? So what I'm going to do here is on my front view, I'm just going to scale in a little with the green and a little with the blue. And how do I know I'm doing the right size? I'm guessing, but I can also check my X-ray, right? My X-ray is right here. And I can line up those edges until they are pretty lined up. That looks it's actually pretty accurate. I was pretty on, pretty spot on. Okay. So that's one. The next thing is you'll notice this is the shape of a hexagon. And guess what? This little hubcap here is a hexagon. So I'm going to do the same exact move. I'm going to hit extrude, command E, hit that global tool. And now I'm going to, again, grab my green box, grab my blue box, and scale them in until I have my nice little hexagon here. And if I want it, looks like the hexagon on the side is a little fatter. And I'm going to turn off my x-ray. and I'm just going to kind of eyeball. Oh, that looks good. I'm happy with that. All right. So we're at the start of making these beams. And you'll notice that all of these beams come down into a pinch. So what we need to do here is we need to kind of just manipulate some geometry before we make any more extrusions. All right. Double check in three mode. Don't get too freaked out when it gets like that. It's just letting you know. Don't worry about that. All right. So I need to widen up the bases of these beams, and I need to widen up the bases of those beams. So what I'm going to do is just go to vertex mode, and I'm going to zoom way in. And the two vertices I want to grab are this one and this one. Those are on the inside, um, the inside two vertices of these two, uh, let's call them beams. Right, they're about, they're eventually going to be beams. I'm also going to grab. I'm going to do four at a time. So I'm going to grab these other two inside vertices down here. One, two. Right. I'm going to hit scale R, and I'm going to make them until they're about parallel. I could also double check and use my X-ray mode and compare them to the drawing. So maybe a little bit thicker, right about there. If I find that. It, they're, they're going the other way. I can also do the same thing to the beams on this side. I can grab the, the inside ones. And I'm grabbing multiple to kind of keep them consistent. So when I grab all four, I know that all four of those are going to be the same width. And again, I'm just going to scale them until they're about parallel. There. Something like that. Okay. I have to do this center beam. The center beam is also pinching. Uh, it's also a little too narrow right here. So I'm just going to take these four vertices. One, two, oops, sorry, three, four. Let me zoom out so you can see the four. I'm going to hit scale, and then that will widen up those center beams as well. And then maybe I'll make these a little skinnier too. One, two, oops, did I just extrude? I'm good. All right, one, two, three, four. Hit R, scale them inside, just so they look relatively parallel. And I'm saying relatively. Okay. So now I have six beams here. I'm gonna. I'm not even gonna use the reference, the drawing anymore. But I have. And if I go to face mode, I have one. I have these. Each one of those sets of edges, those pairs of edges, have made a nice place to create beams. So here's what I'm going to do to create beams. I'm not going to select the beams. I'm going to select these big fat faces. And there should be six of them, right? Those six fat faces. And I'm going to extrude. Command E. Again, hit the universal tool. And I'm just going to push them in. 
a little, a little red arrow goes a long way. Don't go too far. You'll hit the other side of the wing. Just a, just a nice little nudge, and that gets them a nice indentation. Um, if you do that, you're golden. This next little step is extra. If you wanted to take some artistic license and give it like a little bit more of like a, a hubcap or just add a little more detail here, what else I can do is I can extrude more on these faces here. So if I hit Command E, I can kind of extrude. Oops, let's just do universal. Sorry, just the center one. Pull it in, and then maybe Command E, global, and I'll pull it out just a little bit, and give it maybe one more nub, a lot smaller in the middle, something like that. Command E, pull it up, boom. All right, just to kind of give it a little more texture and depth, just just a few extra extrusions goes a long way. Now. You, one last thing we forgot to do was we forgot to do the inside paneling. You're like, oh man, I don't want to do that again. Well, edge loop didn't work out here, but now that we've done these extra extrusions, edge loop's going to work phenomenally in here. So we actually only have three steps. We're going to make two edge loops, and then we're going to do that extrusion trick again. So if I go to my mesh tools, choose insert edge loop, I can just grab this edge here, and that's my little inner ring hubcap, and then I'm going to go to edge loop here and my outer ring hubcap or the, the little the ridge and I'm just gonna eyeball it something like that if you're not happy with the shape of the edge loop the inner edge loop you can just go grab some edges and you can make it look more hexagonal Shoop. to match the other side and now I'm gonna do the same trick one two three four five six faces I'm gonna extrude Hit the global tool, pull them in a little bit. Again, not too far, something like that. And I've made the inside panel of that wing. And that is looking pretty good. Okay, so go ahead and hit save or save as right now. You might wanna save as and call it something like uh, wing is done, right? The wing is done. We're not looking for like PS4, PS5, right? TIE Fighter, we're looking at like an N64 model piece, like, and this is working pretty good. All right, so now let's get to the cockpit. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add the details to the cockpit. Before we're gonna do that, we're gonna cut in half, because actually cutting in half is gonna make it easier to work. Um, we're then going to reflect the, the wing to the other side. All right, so first thing I wanna do is I wanna cut this guy in half. I'm gonna go back to my edge loop tool, insert edge loop. And I'm going to click and hold that edge loop until it gets really close to the middle. Now, I have a trick at the very, very end, which is going to help us make this perfectly zero on the line. So if, if you're not exact right now, I have my Konami code that's going to really help us out. Um, now I want to delete all these faces. Double click over here. I'm going to turn off camera base selection. Once again, I'm double clicking on my arrow, turning off camera base selection. And I'm going to select every single face and it's selecting through, all right? Just like that. I'm gonna hit delete, and now I have half of a cockpit, which is what I want, all right? So now, so now, after I um, have cut this in half, I can now focus on making a couple things. We're not gonna add everything, but we're gonna add kind of a mock windshield here, and not all the details here. There's actually this little circle right here, that's a gun barrel. We're gonna add the gun barrel, and then on the back, we're just gonna add some simple thrusters. Um, so some of the stuff we're not even gonna use this image for, but we'll, we're definitely gonna use it for uh, this windshield right here. So um, you'll notice I kinda need an extra ring of vertices right here to kinda help create this circle shape. And we're not gonna do what we did with the wing where we have uh, extra beams here. You could, and you can add a few more edge loops and all that stuff, but we're not gonna do that because they, they, they likely would paint that on. Um, but we are gonna make like a ridge here and the ridge here. We're gonna make it look semi-indented, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go right click, we're gonna go to face mode, and I'm gonna select these front six faces. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm gonna hit extrude. Now this extrusion is different. I'm not gonna hit the global tool. Okay, so I keep telling you hit the global tool, hit the global tool. Here's why we don't hit the global tool. By not hitting the global tool, now it scales 
every face in relation to its angle. So it's actually, if, if I hit the global tool, it's going to ruin the roundness that we worked on earlier. Here, I'll even do it. I'm going to do it. And right. If I hit the global tool, when I scale it in, you'll notice it pinches and distorts and looks all, all kinds of weird. Right. Sometimes you want that effect, but not right now. So I'm just going to undo that. And notice I'm undoing all the way back to my selection because I don't want to make any mistakes, just like that warning I gave you earlier. So I'm going to hit extrude again, not going to hit the global tool. And now when I scale, right, it keeps the shape relatively a lot better than it did with the global. No, it keeps the shape of our rounding that we did before, which is going to come in handy later, right? Um, so now I've made this extra ring. And you can see that's going to be a nice, awesome shape to work with over here. All right. So now that I've extruded, these are actually going to be too many faces. So these three faces along the edge, delete. And now we're going to get edge mode. And let's pull these faces so these wind up being the center faces. I forgot to tell you, if I didn't mention it, delete is the key. Uh, you hit delete on the keyboard. Hit the delete key on the keyboard. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to make this ring, um, these rings of edges, that's going to be my outer ring, and then these, I, did I say edges? These, this ring of vertices is going to be my outer ring, and these four are going to just create my inner ring. It's going to look not like a perfect circle, but we'll, we're going to be happy with it. All right, so I'm going to pull this one down. Maybe I'll grab those two, cement, and then scale. So they kind of move symmetrically in the right spot. Something right about there. And then I'm going to grab these two. And I'm going to scale them way in. I'm going to need to use my x-ray mode. So I can kind of line it up with that circle. So I'm going to scale them down and move them in. Eventually that's going to make a hexagon and that's going to look good. Because remember we're going to mirror it. I'm going to turn off my x-ray so you can see this again. And now I'm going to um, pair by pair. So the top one and the bottom one. I'm going to grab... Top one and the bottom one, hit scale, move them in, double check with x-ray, there you go, that looks pretty good, right? I'm going to do the next set. I'm going to keep turning on and off x-ray. I might go to four view. Yeah, I'm going to go to four view so I can just use my keyword. I'm going to get those lined up. See, this one's, those two vertices are now lined up with that circle. Go back to five mode. I got these two. Oops, sorry. I got these two. This, these next, I'm actually going to have to scale and move. So I'm going to hit 4. I'm going to scale them way in. I'm actually going to move them W over a bit more. Hit scale up. Actually, I'm going to move them back a little bit because I know where there's... And then the last one is this pair right here. I'm going to hit scale. I'm going to pull it in. Out there. Maybe a little bit more. There. Okay. Um, and so what that winds up doing is it creates this nice little windshield effect. Um, it, it reflects the Um Through my moving and, and grabbing stuff and scaling on the on the side view, I might want to like push this face in a little bit um, just to kind of so it doesn't bulge out too much. But that definitely works. Now to kind of give it the effect of like I'm not going to worry about these beams, but if I wanted to make it look like it's inserted. I can then grab these faces, one, two, three, four, five faces. I'm going to hit extrude, command E. Again, I'm not going to hit global this time. I'm going to scale them in, scale them down. That's kind of creating this nice little ridge there. It's giving this little dent effect. I can either extrude again, or I can just push in the extrusion I did and just give it a little nudge in, and that kind of creates that little dented effect again. I'm going to do the same thing on the center one, Command E, scale it in a little bit, scale it down a little bit, and then extrude in. I'm going to push it in just a nudge. Now, that extrusion gave us a lot of extra faces on the cut mark. So before we move on, let's delete some of these faces. So I'm actually going to delete a lot. I'm going to delete one, oop, that one, not that one, two, I believe there's one more on the other side. And then one, two, one, two. You could construct ridges all around here, but we're not going to. This is our first project, like I said, and that looks good. Now, if you're starting to be like, oh, it's not flat, again, don't worry. I have a secret code that's really going to help fix that in a second. 
So now I have the delete of the faces. Again, we're going to work on that part. Uh, the next thing, before we go to the back of the TIE Fighter, we'll make the little blaster right here. So it's a really small detail. We really lose resolution when we, when we zoom way in. But that little circle there is going to be a blaster, right? Um, we're going to do this similar trick, but if you have one face, a uh, four vertices don't really make a nice circle. However, six vertices make a very nice circle. It's like a hexagon, but when you smooth it out, it'll, it'll be rather... So you only need six vertices. Um, you could go grabbing four faces and extruding out these four faces, but that would be uh, a little too much. So what I'm going to do to make the blasters, I'm going to make those two faces. I'm going to shrink them down after extruding them and then extrude them out for a blaster. So first, first step, like always, extrude. And similar to the, the TIE Fighter trick, we're not going to hit the, the windshield trick, excuse me. Um, we're not going to hit the global tool. And we're going to shrink these down again. I'm going to go really flat this way. And then red box really tiny this way. All right. And that is close to a hexagon. We'll, we'll pause it out. But before I start moving individual vertices, I want to kind of get this in the right space while I have this local access. So... I'm going to hit X-ray. It's almost on the right spot. Uh, I'm going to slide it over a little bit, slide it down a little bit, then maybe shrink it just a little bit more. Maybe shrink it just a little bit more. Like that. And this, this one weird random vertice is not playing nice. So with those six vertices right there, I'm going to make this into a hexagon, hexagonal, hexagon-ish pattern. And this time I'm just going to have to, I'm just going to eyeball, just eyeballing it to make that into the best little hexagon it can be. Something like that. I'm going to turn off the x-ray so I can see it. Is that looking good? Yeah. Good enough. All right. So that little hexagon is going to be a little blaster. And then when I mirror it, he'll have two little laser cannons to fire out of, right? So going back to face, I have both of those still selected, and I'm going to extrude, Command E. This time I am in, gonna hit the global tool, and I'm gonna pull it out. Again, if I wanted to try and straighten it, I could try. Um, or I can just eyeball, so I can do it with the box to kind of flatten it out until it looks flat enough. Um, I could also do the vertex trick that I'm not showing in this video, but you could. That's pretty flat. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, uh, push it back. They don't protrude out that much, if I'm remembering right. But they do protrude out. And then they also do like kind of like a, a, a decreased barrel. So I'm going to hit extrude, command E. And then I'm going to shrink it down with the green and the red box. And then now I get like that second smaller barrel coming out. So I'm just going to make one more extrusion, command E. I'm going to pull it out wide, longer, excuse me. And if I really want to get fancy, I can actually make it hollow. So again, I'm going to hit extrude one more time, command E, and I'm going to scale it down, and I'm going to scale it in, green box and red box. And you'll notice that's where the barrel will go. And now I'm going to make one last extrusion, command E, and push it all the way in. And that's my gun barrel. Pretty sweet, huh? And when I reflect it, I'll actually have two, right? So that's how you make the gun barrel. And then we're just going to move on to the back side and make some thrusters. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the back and I'm going to go to face mode. And it's a very similar trick to the gun barrel. So I'm going to select these two back faces and I'm going to hit extrude, command E. The first extrusion, I'm going to just scale them down a little bit. And I'm going to scale them with the red box, scale them in a little bit this way. Um, those don't look like perfect thrusters, and I do want them kind of attached, so I am going to delete this face. I could grab this edge here and flatten it out, but remember I told you I'm going to have a trick that's going to make everything flat, so I'm going to leave it kind of stuck there. So my thruster is going to come out of here. I still want to be in edge mode, and I want to kind of scale it down there, maybe, and maybe scale this one up a little bit. I can also check that it, it's still keeping its round shape. Am I happy with that? Yeah. All right, so my thruster is going to come out of here. So I'm going to hit face mode. I'm going to select these two faces now and hit command E for extrusion. This time I am going to hit global mode, and I'm going to pull it out with the blue arrow. Something like that. 
Um, and now I, I kind of want to do the similar feature with the gun barrel where it's going to have a ridge and then it's going to be hollow inside. So I'm going to hit Command E. This time I'll keep it local and I'm going to squeeze it down green box, red box. And I get this nice little ridge here. And I'm going to do one more extrusion, Command E, this time global. And I'm going to push it in like so. Not too crazy in, something like that. Again, I do want them to be one piece. I'm going to delete one more face, this one right here. If you don't do this face, it's not the end of the world. You'll look like you have two separate extrusions for a panel. This, If I delete this one, when I eventually merge this into one piece, that's going to get, so they'll have two big little things there. You'll see. So just delete that one side face that was right there, like so. Okay. Last thing I want to do. So I have done all the details with um, with the cockpit that I want to make today. I've and then if I wanted to try and clean it up. So you want maybe you want to like go through and look and make sure if something's a little round. You know maybe mess with a few vertexes or edges. Like it kind of if I move these back a little bit, it'll appear a little rounder. Um, Double check your wing that everything's kind of nice and tip top. Um, anything else that maybe pull these two vertexes out, you know, widen out that that ridge there, maybe even pull them in, just to kind of create it a little more roundy feel. It's up to you. If you if you notice a mistake, sometimes when you extrude, you might have pulled a vertex in a weird spot or just something. So just go through, give it a nice little look, see, clean it up. If you've got a lot of time in your hands, add more details, whatever you want. Give it more thrusters, more guns, whatever you like. Um, but there, this is how we're going to wrap it up. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to um, do a special kind of duplicating where we take this tie, the TIE fighter, this half, and we're going to copy it over. So if you do Command C, Command V, copy and paste, or if you just hit Command D, you'll notice um, that's not going to help us, right? I could hit Scale and try to scale it like that, and that way it's kind of inverted. I could go to the channel box and type that in right over here and type in like the exact negative thing. But that, that's gonna be a little trickier when you have more complex objects. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a special kind of copy and paste. The first thing we wanna do is we wanna clean up these edges. Remember I said don't worry about it, don't worry about it? Well now we're gonna worry about it and I have the special secret code. That special secret code is right here highlighted for you. M-O-V-E space negative X space negative A space zero semicolon. It has to be just like this um, if you miss a space or a negative or you type in a colon instead of a semicolon, um, you don't get the result that we want. So be very careful when typing that in. Undo is your best friend. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to vertex mode. And we need to select all of these vertexes here. Don't bother trying to shift select every single one. Here's the trick. Select any one vertex along the cut. So any of the vertices here along the edge. Hold down the shift key and double click. You know you did it right when you get the entire ring of vertices selected. These are This is every single vertex on the cut. Did you miss it? I'll do it again. One vertex, hold the shift key, double click the next one. Boom. It has to be the, the adjacent one. If you don't, it'll, it won't get the whole ring. Then down here in the lower left hand corner, you're going to notice it says MEL. That's for the Maya embedded language. And you're going to type in the following exactly. All lowercase, M-O-V-E, space, Negative X, space, negative A, space, zero, semicolon. Hit enter. Now watch. Look what happens when I hit enter. Look at the model. Keep your eyes over here, right there. Ready? Enter. Boom. They all kind of moved. Every vertex placed itself exactly on the zero line or the X origin. Did you miss it? I'm going to do it again. So once again, select one vertex, shift, select the other one, type in M-O-V-E, space, negative X, space, negative A, space, zero, semicolon. I'll even go to my four view. Oops. Let's get out of there. Go to my four view. You can see it even more clearly here. And I'm going to hit enter. Bam. Oops. I didn't have anything selected. One more time. One, shift, double click the one right next to it. Get the entire row of vertices. That code again, M-O-V-E, space, negative X, space, negative A, space, zero, semicolon, enter. Boom, perfectly flat. Right click, go to object mode. I'm then going to duplicate this. So I'm going to go over here to edit. And I'm going to choose duplicate special options. 
The one option I'm going to change is this first one. Whenever you see a group of three numbers, it's always X, Y, Z. And we want to copy it along the X axis. How do I know? Because I'm looking at the, the guide right here. So if I type in a negative one here, it will invert all of the, the, the X features of every vertex to make it look like this. And now I have a complete TIE Fighter. There's only two more steps I want to do. I want to select both sides in object mode. So it's really still two pieces. It's really stu still two pieces. So I want to select both of them. I want to go up to the top and I'm going to choose Mesh Combine. Boop. And now it's all one piece with a control on the side. Next, it's still not completely one piece. If I go to vertex mode, and I choose one vertex here, there's still not, act there's actually two vertexes living on top of one another. Two vertices living on top of one another. So what I wanna do now is I just want to merge. I wanna merge those vertices. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go to Edit Mesh, Merge, and what that did was, if they're really, really close together, the threshold distance is at 1 100th. If they're really, really close together, the two became one. Every once in a while, in this scrappy area right here, like you might get some vertices here that accidentally merge together. When we model our character later, it might be the mouth or something. But we're set. I'm going to hit W, and now it's all one piece. There's no longer two vertices living there. There's only one. And now this guy is ready to turn in. Make sure you hit save, command S. Um, in the next video, I'm going to show you a little trick to make this guy fly around, and you're going to turn in a playlist of him flying around. But that is exactly how you do your model. took a little bit longer than I wanted to for the quick, quick version, um, but I hope this video was a little more succinct and you can call it, follow through a little more um, concisely. All right. Congratulations. You have a TIE fighter. It's pretty cool. <laughs>